Hello and welcome to the video. This is finally my flying review of the TBS Chipito. Now I've been flying mine on 4S. Lots of the other reviewers have been using it on the default 6S, which is what's kind of advertised as a bit of a ripper, but actually it's a far more capable aircraft in a more rounded way that's probably going to be of interest to more pilots. So I wanted to kind of go through what it's like on 4S, what I found out, and also potentially some of the tweaks and things that I'm going to do to make it a better flyer on a 4S setup. Now I need to say a massive thank you to my flying buddy Adam for the moral support and also for operating the hat cam for the footage you're about to see. He is an absolute star, a very capable pilot in his own right. It's always nice when you're playing with a new model to have somebody there to kind of offer the moral support and also if you do have an accident to be able to tell you where you need to walk to to go and find the thing in the grass. Now I have made a few mods to this model not a lot. The first one I've talked about is the fact that the tail is removable. I'm pleased I've done that because I think I will be potentially changing the motor and prop but more about that in a minute. I have added a couple of grips to the side of the fuselage in front of the wings this is good old fashioned wet and dry 600 p600 wet and dry sandpaper i just cut a little, little bit off and just stick it on the side i can't remember who gave me this tip but it's an amazing way to do it bit of you who pour it means that it is a non-slip grip that is moisture resistant that you can use even if the plane or your hands are wet in the winter i've also don't forget modified the hd cage just a little bit cut off some pieces and uh, changed it around so that the walk snail unit would fit i'm flying mine with walk snail now the specs of the model here this is using all the tbs supply pieces the new all-in-one flight controller the motor and prop as it comes from tbs the all-up weight with the battery is 581 grams it's 499 grams without a battery so it's not super lightweight but it's not heavy by any means for this size of aircraft I'm flying this, or have been, with my regular Gen Zace 2200 milliamp hour endurance lipos uh, that needs to be right in the nose for the central gravity, which means that it is absolutely possible to use a much heavier battery than that. It's about 162 grams, something like that. I think you could get away with at least another 100 grams worth of battery and push it back a little bit further with the supplied motor and prop to balance it to get CG. Speaking of CG, I'm using the supplied CG marks that are right at the front of the base of the wing. They seem to work brilliantly, and I am using the recommended TBS throws, 15 and 12 millimeters for the controls that's in the manual. So with all that said, what's it like to fly? Well, let's start with the speeds. First of all, slow speed. Uh, it gets three stars. In this weight and configuration, it will go below 20 miles an hour, uh, which I was very pleased about. Its bigger brother won't get anywhere near that, but this is a much more respectable number to be able to get in in smaller areas. I wouldn't probably trust it below much about 18 miles per hour. You probably need a reasonably high alpha to, to kind of maintain the altitude, but it's very very good at kind of resisting stalls and you can kind of float into the ground you'll see it landing in a minute high speed on 4s this only gets one star it'll go at just over 72 miles an hour i think if i was using a higher c rated pack in this i might be able to squeak 74 75 it's not going to light the sky alight on 4s with the supplied motor and prop that comes with the kit but that's still a pretty respectable number it's pulling about 22.8 amps at that top speed and um it's quite a slippy model is the only other thing i'll mention here it's very aerodynamic like its bigger brother so when you put the nose down you immediately pick up speed so if you are coming into land get used to coming off the throttle a little bit as you bring the nose down otherwise you'll end up with it coming in very quickly efficiency this gets a three star in this configuration it can fly for more than 20 minutes i have been flying at about 50 percent throttle it's pulling about four and a bit amps when it's like that however it will easily cruise at more like the 30 miles an hour rather than the 45 50 miles an hour at 50 percent throttle dropping the throttle off will dramatically reduce the amp draw and that'll extend your flight time Again, I'm using a 4S 2200 milliamp hour endurance pack here, so those heavier batteries are possible with a little bit more milliamp hours in. Uh, the maximum watts while I've been flying around uh, full speed is about 329 watts. 
and a thousand milliamp hours are being used in the battery in this mixed flying in around 11 and a half minutes so for my 2200 milliamp hour pack it'll easily last over 20 minutes however pulling back on the throttle a little bit would extend that significantly potentially if I changed out the motor and prop for something that would be more ideal for a 4S configuration, I think I could extend that flight time by well over 60-70% with a little bit of thought. At the current amp drawer, I wouldn't say it was a candidate for lithium-ion packs. However, if I could get the average draw down to more like two or three amps in the cruise, then lithium-ion might be an option and that would really push the flight times available. In terms of noise, it's a little bit noisier than I expected, but then surprise, surprise, it is a three-bladed quad prop. These are not designed to be efficient. They're designed to produce a lot of thrust. You can hear it when you're going to be in a park. Don't forget, quieter props means that it's producing the thrust more efficiently. I think by going to a two-bladed prop, you could increase the efficiency significantly over this three-bladed one that's come as part of it. Toughness, this is going to get a four star with all the flying we've done. It's completely as it was supplied. Uh, the foam is a nice high quality. I like the idea that the HDFPV mount is not fixed. So if you accidentally bump it on a landing, it's going to bump into the sides and push that backwards rather than smash your camera. However, if you're going to be flying in areas that are rockier, I would probably add a little bit of leading edge protection, put a little bit of tape on the belly and over the leading edges on the lower side of the vertical stabilizer too, to stop it getting ripped up. Acrobatics, it gets four or four and a half stars here. It is able to perform loops and rolls at those throw rates without any problem at all. Uh, but it's nice and calm if you just want to poodle around and kind of explore and have a lot of fun and use it and fly it that way too. So those throws in the manual are the ones that I would probably recommend that you set up. Room inside, well, this one only gets three stars. There's only just enough room inside at the rear compartment for the all-in-one flight controller and the other pieces. But in the battery compartment, there's loads of room for you to have a heavier battery a little bit further back to still balance the central gravity. The space for the flight controller, ESC, GPS and receiver are tight if you're not using the all-in-one flight controller from reports I've had from others. However, as you can see with the all-in-one, the supplied TBS stuff, it goes in absolutely beautifully. Travel and breakdown, it gets a nice three and a half stars with this. It does break down into smaller parts without the need for specialized tools. However, I have designed and 3D printed a little thing that you can get into to undo that O-ring to release the wings if you don't have very, very small fingers. It definitely passes the MX-5 boot test, which is an important one for me. And when you take it apart, the largest piece is the body that's going to be 50.4 centimeters long and about 13 and a half centimeters wide and nine centimeters tall with the main vertical stabilizer removed with the adaptation that I've done. A higher score would be there. It would probably be four or more if that tail was designed to do that from the factory. In summary, this is a really nice model to fly. This is a model that is a lot more versatile than the other wings that Black Sheep have released. 2S is something that I know people have done, but however, it's really the lowest end of the setups. If you want the lightest possible build, put a very small motor and prop on the back, you might be able to get away with a bit of slope soaring. However, 3S with a 1408 motor is where it starts to make sense for proximity with a little or no wind. And 4S and 6S with the supplied motor and prop is probably going to be the sweet spot that most people are going to fly it on. However, on 4S, I think swapping out the three-bladed prop for a more conventional two-bladed prop will increase the efficiency a little, but also increase the chance of the prop hitting the ground on landing. 6x3 is probably where I would go if I were going to keep this motor. However, I think I might swap the motor as well as the prop, and if I do, I'll post my results. So in terms of things to like, there's a lot to like in here. It breaks down easily for travel and storage. It is backpackable if you have a larger backpack. I like the custom all-in-one flight controller and ESC setup. The CLI that's downloadable from TBS seems to be a really nice choice and well set up. 
Also available with the RD Pilot as well, if you want to put that on instead of iNav on the all-in-one. The foam is a nice quality, and the build is fun with everything fitting together really well. And it results in a very strong model with lots of carbon fibre in the right places, but pilots needing super speeds, running them super hot on things like 6S, may want to laminate the wings and add carbon fibre ribbons to stop flexing and stuff. So if I were to make one again, what would I do differently? Well, there's only a handful of things now I've actually built one. The first would be I would connect the connecting rods from the servos to the control surfaces down another hole rather than limit the movement in iNav. That's just the better way to do it. I would secure the motor wires to the side of the tray where it passes underneath the tail so that the tail could be removed and slotted in a little bit easier. Um, I might do that when I replace the motor, but again, more about that in a second. I might add LEDs to the build just so that it's easier orientation when it's a bit darker with it being dark foam. And hopefully the all-in-one from TBS does add a 9-volt battery illuminator circuit to run things like the HDFPV system. Running it on 6S potentially can cause damaging spikes, so I might add an extra cap on that connection just to protect it. So TBS have made a 6S Ripper, but as you can see, it can do a lot more than its bigger brother, the Mojito, in terms of a broader speed envelope and potentially a wider community of people that will want to get their hands on it. It's a far more rounded wing than anything else they've made. I doubt they set out to make a really nice all-rounder, but that's what they've ended up making. I would like to see TBS starting to put tested setups on the listings of recommendations for motor and prop setups for things like 3, 4, as well as the 6S setup. If you want to extend your flight times, add a little bit more efficiency, that would be a welcome idea. I'm sure those things are going to appear in the forums as well. Personally, I am going to replace the motor and prop with something very similar to what is on my current 4S Atom RC Dolphin setup. If I do and I fly it, I'll repost how that changes the efficiency and extends the flight time and the flight characteristics. This is one that's going to be staying in my regular fleet lineup for the time being and probably take the place of my beloved ZOHD Dart, the OG one, the 635mm one. This will break down in the same way and provide me with the same kind of fun. It's slightly less floaty, but a very capable wing that can do lots of different things for lots of different pilots. I've shared my interim iNav default down below if you want to go and have a look at how I've got that set up. Use with caution. In summary, this is recommended. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.